so friends how you all are doing so my intent of making this video will be to let you know some of the important charts graphs which are very important from your community medicine I hope you all have read all these by this time and अब नहीं पढ़ोगे तो कब पढ़ोगे पढ़ लो भाई और नहीं पढ़े हो तो don't worry I'll cover this at least the minimum bare minimum which is needed for your for your exam so this can you name this what type of chart is it what type of plot is it yes it is stem and leaf plot what happens here is there is one vertical column and these are the leaves the horizontal ones the horizontal row number ones are the leaves so basically just remember how to identify these plots this one is stem and leaf plot the vertical column of number listed downwards in increasing order and here the respective frequency are mentioned so it is basically a detailed quantitative data presentation a method for showing frequency with which certain classes of values occur so this is the stem this forms the stem and the horizontal are the leaves of this stem and leaf plot moving to the next one can you name it just name it for me it is box and whisker plot okay so this one if it comes it is box and whisker plot depicting group of numerical data through their quartiles so here the middle one remains the median or the second quartile those the one which is nearer to the minimum is the first and this one is the third quartile so one future slide is also there in my presentation i'll tell you so tell me which type of uh, distribution it is showing so it is showing a gaussian distribution now if i ask you ki what is the value if we go from the median means the question is how much is the area between point a and b on either side of the mean so between point a and b on either side of the mean how much is the area so you know we are talking about third third standard deviation three standard deviation it means mu plus minus 3 standard deviation that comes to how much 99.7% okay so if it would be mu plus 1 standard deviation it would be 68.3% if it would be 2 standard deviation it would be 95.4% and here it is asking 3 standard deviation it means the answer here becomes 99.7 standard deviation now in this curve tell me the distribution whether it is left skewed whether it is normal distribution or whether it is right skewed so you can observe that it is positively skewed that is it is right skewed so what will happen here is mean will be greater than median will be greater than mode okay so right skewed curve mean greater than mode Uh, sorry mean greater than median greater than mode okay now they are asking in recent time some of the sampling things so you have to identify which type of sampling is being done here so if you observe what is happening here is just a cluster random sampling means we are taking one cluster from here and one from here there is no rule it is just a random sampling but we are taking whole of one cluster not single one so it is cluster random sampling there is, is no systematic there is no stratified but cluster random sampling you do you know that who what it does who has a technique of using 30 into 7 technique that is 30 clusters each containing 7 children who are 12 to 23 months of age and are completely immunized for primary immunization till measles vaccine means who follow this criteria in india for evaluation of immunization coverage 30 into 7 technique so it can be one of your 
future question cluster random sampling now can you tell me what this arrow is denoting to you yes it is denoting to you the median that is the middlemost value in a distribution now tell me the type of graph it is histogram graphical representation for quant continuous quantitative data okay so x axis y axis marking the frequency quantitative okay now tell me what is this so this is a histogram showing you a frequency polygon what happens is we are just joining the midpoint of the histogram and what we get is frequency polygon that is these are made by joining the midpoint of the class interval at the height of frequencies so it is what it is frequency polygon okay not histogram now tell me what is this so this is just a frequency curve why curve because here you see one curve pattern is getting formed so what happens is when the number of observations is large and the group interval gets reduced the above the previous frequency polygon loses its angulation and it becomes more of curve like and forms the frequency curve and not polygon so this was the frequency polygon this is the frequency curve okay and this was the histogram now tell me what is this one I, whether it is frequency polygon line diagram ogif or histogram so it is a frequency polygon presenting variation by line so it is basically a line diagram okay now what is this just remember it, it this curve is called ogif okay so it is cumulative frequency diagram or ogif which is given here ogif it is not a histogram sometimes you need to rule out the option to get the answer so also this is one of the method for getting answer in your exam now tell me what type of curve or plot is this so this is a dot diagram or a scatter diagram what is the other name of this diagram the other name is correlation diagram means by this curve or plot you can see ki what type of correlation is there between the quantitative variables the vertical axis in the scatter or the dot, dot diagram should be dependent or the outcome variable ye jo vertical wala hai ye jo hota hai dependent ya outcome variable hona chahiye aur jo horizontal hai wo matlab baki jo hai ye aur kuch data ho sakta hai okay so this is a scatter or dot diagram now there is one question ki tell me the correlation coefficient r will lie between now in this type of diagrams you have to see there may be certain condition like if you see the option 0 to 1 1 to 1 and 1 and minus 1 0 and minus 1 0 and 100 so i'll go for each option individually and make you understand what can be the different scenario in case of correlation now when the r will be equals to plus 1 when there is perfectly positive correlation what it means it it means that both the lines have a positive slope so it there will be a r equals to plus 1 when it will be minus 1 so minus 1 means perfectly negative correlation that is both the lines have negative slope or superimposed okay so in the same kind same similar way that plus 1 is a positive slope and superimposed it means rise in one variable leads to proportionate rise in other and in similar way negative correlation both the lines have negative slope and superimposed rise in one variable leads to proportionate fall in the other now when the r values lies between plus 1 and 0 so when there will be moderately positive correlation that is both the lines have positive slope rise in one variable leads to rise in other variable but not proportionately and also the lines are not superimposed now now when they will be called a moderately negative 
correlation that is the r value will lie between minus 1 and 0 when so this is the condition when you can say this so how both the lines have negative slope and rise in one variable leads to fall sorry <coughs> ah, yes rise in one variable leads to fall in other and both are not superimposed and when r will be equals to 0 when there is no correlation both the lines are perpendicular okay in that condition so it can be one of your individual question that they have given two things and both the lines are going perpendicular it means they have no relation rise of all in one variable leads to no change in other it means r here equals to zero so keep it in mind for your future questions now tell me what is it it is a pie chart what is it it is a bar diagram now tell me what is this one is it a bar diagram or is it a multiple bar chart or cluster or simple bar chart or component so confused it is component bar chart you have further divided it into the components like male and female here so it is component bar chart now tell me what is this diagram so this is Venn diagram okay very important Venn diagram it shows all the possible logical relations between a finite collection of different sets it is used in medicine to depict overlapping medical conditions through overlapping circles okay so don't forget this it is Venn diagram <coughs> now the same things now you can answer it which plot is this and the thing which I was saying first quartile median third quartile and maximum bhai ye sab aana chahiye tha tumko abhi tak agar nahi aata to kuch garbad hai padho ha ah? so ye kya hai batao which one is this so this is yes kaplan and meyer plot basically this kaplan and meyer plot is carried for survival analysis okay so kme or kaplan or meyer estimator is a non parametric estimation advantage kya hai ye sensor data jo hota hai part of sample loss jo sample hamara sampling karte samay lost ho jata hai usko bhi ye account mein leta hai so survival analysis ke liye hum kaplan and meyer plot ka use karte hain and this is the one kaplan and meyer plot now again this is showing you a not uniform but normal distribution now tell me some more questions from sampling tell me which type of sampling you are seen here so if you see here a non homogeneous population is converted to homogeneous group how you see from each strata 1 2 3 4 from each strata we are taking some sample okay but whatever sample we are taking it is just random like here the in first strata we are taking second one in the second we are taking first one then first one then then second ones and then second one means there is no systematic sampling but it is stratified so it is stratified random sampling okay so when you can apply it it is applicable for large non homogeneous population and if you see why we are seeing it non homogeneous you see he, here 1 then 10 then 12 then 2 then 4 then 6 it is not like 1 2 3 4 5 6 it is non homogeneous and a big population so here we can take stratified random and why I said stratified random because we are taking samples from every strata in a random way now tell me which one is this so here you can see it is a small homogeneous population see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 are uh, small and homogeneous and how you are taking you are taking 2 here then 5 here then 10 here means just random so it is simple random sampling what are the methods of simple random sampling if I ask you so lottery method random number table computer software these two 
simple random sampling now what is this one so this one is just for your revision a repeat which of of the previous question which i have asked is stratified no not a stratified cluster random sampling so we are taking a random from clusters that the thing which who uses for evaluation of immunization coverage cluster random sampling 30 into 7 technique okay so it is very important for you now tell me this one so if you see here we are taking every third value uh, that is every kth unit is chosen in the population list and it is just means there is one sequence systematization okay but we are taking it as random so it is systematic random sampling okay so this can be done for large non-homogeneous population where complete list of individual is available we should know that key 50 number or 12 number of people are there in the population otherwise it will be difficult to decide na, ki which one to take which interval to take for sampling now tell me for which this formula is denoting for which one ANOVA mean chi-square or paired so it is for chi-square test so these tests are important they may ask you a simple means they are not giving you pencil to solve questions so in in this means statistic portions also they will give you simple one but it it will seem difficult to you like you will be wanting pencil to solve them but it will be very simple one just you need to give some 20, 10 20 seconds to it and you will get the answer and try practicing the statistic question solving them without pen and pencil because in real exam they may not give you like in in this year they they didn't gave you pen and pencil okay so one more extra edge for you is that fisher test is a variant of chi square test when the sample size is less than 30 then you can use fisher test okay now tell me this one this is a very important plot because it is used in meta analysis so meta analysis has a lot of significance and this plot is used for meta analysis so this one is forest plot yes you right now tell me this you will get a reward if you can answer it okay so this is qq plot easy now qq plot this one is qq plot quantile quantile plot so this is a graphical technique for determining if two data sets come from population with a common distribution उस समझ में आया कुछ नहीं याद रखो बस अगर ऐसा आता है क्यों क्यों प्लॉट ऑप्शन में होता है तो मार्क कर देना है और उससे ज़्यादा मत समझो टाइम भी नहीं है समझ रहे हो सो गाइस आई थिंक आई हैव डिस्कस मच एंड आई डू नॉट वांट टू प्रोलॉंग दिस वीडियो टू मेक इट बोरिंग एंड टिल देन स्टे हैप्पी स्टडी हार्ड स्टे फोकस्ड एंड डू वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट सो दिस इज डॉक्टर शिवम साइनिंग ऑफ थैंक यू